Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So I'd like to thank Tim. Tim emails me every few days some really good stuff. And the other day, he sent me a uh, link to, uh, to a Federal Reserve speech dating back to 2002. This was given by Ben Bernanke, right? And it talks about uh, all about quantitative easing. Pretty much the the all the footsteps that goes into the quantitative easing program, and uh, and there was some really good stuff in this speech, and so I thought I would kind of you know read you a couple of things that I found that I that I thought were quite quite interesting, um, but uh, yeah, if you want to know, like they knew back in two thousand two that they were going to come to a point where they were going to have to drop interest rates, and they knew they were going to have to hit the zero bound, right, which is you know the lower bound of zero. And they wouldn't be able to drop interest rates any farther than that. And uh, and they know it back then in 2012. And he says there's ways that we can deal with that. Even if we hit the uh, the lower bound, there's still there's still ways we can we can continue on with the uh, stimulating programs, right? And and get this, right? I I read this part and I thought, man, that is why the Fed has been coming out so much and and coming out like. In, in speaking so much, they're doing a lot of like engagements, right? They they seem to be in the uh, in the public a lot lately, and and I found this and I thought, yep, this is the reason why. As I have mentioned, some observers have concluded that when the central bank's policy rates fall to zero, its practical minimum monetary policy loses its ability to further stimulate aggregate demand in the economy. At a broad conceptual level. In my view, it in, in practice as well, the, this conclusion is clearly mistaken. Indeed, under a fiat, that is paper monetary system, a government, in practice, a central bank in cooperation with other agencies should always be able to generate increased nominal spending and inflation even when short-term nominal rates is at zero. The conclusion, the de- deflation is always reversible under a fiat monetary system follows from the basic economic reasoning. A parable may prove useful. Today, an ounce of gold sells for 300, more or less. <laughs> Tells you how long ago that was. Now, suppose that a modern alchemist solves the subject's oldest problem by finding a way to produce unlimited amounts of new gold at essentially no cost. Moreover, his invention is widely publicized and scientifically verified, and he announces his intention to begin mass production of gold within days. What would happen to the price of gold? Presumably, the potentially unlimited supply of cheap gold would cause the market price of gold to plummet. Indeed, if the market for gold is to any degree efficient, the price of gold would collapse immediately after the announcement of the invention before the alchemist had produced a, and marketed a single ounce of the yellow metal. So you guys get that? So basically what you're saying is that if this rumor comes out that says that this alchemist has figured out a way to produce as much gold as, as needed forever, I mean just an unlimited supply of it, the price of gold would drop before the guy even produced any gold. Just by saying that he can do it, right? And so anyway, it goes on and says here, What has this got to do with monetary policy? Like gold, U.S. dollars have a value only to the extent that they are strictly limited in supply. But the U.S. government has a technology called a printing press, or today it's equivalent electronic equivalent, that allows it to produce as many U.S. dollars as it wishes at essentially no cost. But increasing the number of U.S. dollars in circulation, or even by credibly threatening to do so, the U.S. government can also reduce the value of dollars in terms of goods and services, which is equivalent to raising the prices in dollars of those goods and services. We conclude that under the paper monetary system, a determined government can always generate higher spending and hence positive inflation. You guys get that? Oh, man. So what are you saying there is that Pretty much as long as they can always give the word out there that they're going to be able to to ease, then pretty much they or just you know you think about it, they come out every other day saying that they're gonna raise or lower interest rates, right? That's them screwing with the dollar, trying to give a value just simply with their words, right? And and he says it right there that that's one of the tools that they're gonna use. Um let me see here. Oh, this was a good little little section here. Listen to this. This is totally different though, but it goes, the Fed can inject money into the economy 
in still other ways. For example, and he's talking about like, are you just going to continue buying up all this government debt, right? And he goes on this, you know, this U.S. government debt, and he says, for example, the Fed has the authority to buy foreign government debt as well as domestic government debt. Potentially, this class of asset offers a huge scope for the Fed operations, as the quantity of foreign assets eligible for purchase by the Fed is several times the stock of U.S. government debt. <laughs> so he's saying, yeah, you know, if we were to run out of U.S. debt to buy, we can just start buying up foreign debt as well, right? And so, yeah, you know, I thought that was kind of crazy. You think about it. What if they just replaced all the U.S. debt, you know, on the Fed's asset sheet with foreign debt? What would happen then? I guess, could we, like, really, like, beef up our exports by doing that? I have to think about that one for a minute. I, I got I to gotta roll that one around. Anyway, this last little bit I thought was, was probably one of the better parts of the speech because it really played out in the end of... Uh, at the end of 2018 and in the beginning of 2019, right? The last, the, the fourth quarter and the first quarter. Okay, so listen to this. It goes, each of the policy options I have discussed so far involves the Fed's acting on its own. In practice, the effectiveness of anti-deflation policy could be significantly enhanced by the cooperation between monetary and fiscal authorities. A broad-based tax cut, for example, accommodated by the program of open market policy or purchase to alleviate any tendency for interest rates to ra interest rates to increase would almost certainly be an effective stimulant to the to consumption and hence to prices even if households decided not to increase consumption but instead rebalance their portfolios by using their extra cash to acquire real and financial assets through resulting increase in asset values would lower the cost of capital and improve the balance sheet's position of potential borrowers a money finance tax, right? A money finance tax cut is essentially equivalent to Milton Friedman's famous helicopter money. So, yeah, I think that's probably what we experienced in the fourth quarter. All right. I thought this thing was incredibly intriguing. Very good speech. Kind of long. Um, but anyway, I'll leave a link to it down in the description for you guys. Man, beautiful day. Talk to you guys later.